like, here's the thing. We only have a finite amount of time on planet Earth. And this book was so bad that I was actively angry that I was reading it. If you got your jaw shaved down, you no longer have the right to tell me I should love who I am and what I look like. If you get a brow lift, do not tell me to love myself. <laughs> I don't know if this vest is working. If I don't wear it, it'll rot in my closet. I want to make it work and together we can achieve anything. Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Carly, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about Rebels City of Indra written by Kylie Jenner and Kendall Jenner. Of course, this is inspired by like this tweet that went viral. I'm not on Twitter. So I didn't see the tweet. I just like value my mental health too much. And also Elon Musk evokes like an inexplicable sense of dread in my chest. I can't explain it beyond that. It's like seeing him, it sends chills down my spine. Like it's like, I know, I feel like I could know when he's near because my body would have such a reaction. So I'm not on Twitter, but I saw a lot of people tag me in it. My friend Tianta sent it to me and was like, so you're gonna do this, right? And I figured I'll read it and walk you guys through it. So I did that. It's worth noting. I read a lot of celebrity books on this channel. So I feel like my tolerance for celebrity bullshit, it's pretty high. Like I've read about Prince Harry's oscillating penis. You know, I'm a survivor. And somehow this book is literally the worst thing I've ever read in my entire life. I actually want to actively seek monetary gains from the Jenners for what they put me through. Like, here's the thing. We only have a finite amount of time on planet Earth. And this book was so bad that I was actively angry that I was reading it. I was so offended by this book. I was like, you think this deserves people's times. Like, fuck you. <laughs> so just letting you know kind of like where I'm operating at. So I'm gonna walk you through what this book is about so you don't fucking have to read it. I will say this is gonna be as, about as in-depth as I can physically make it. Because while I was reading this book, like technically I was reading it, my eyes were looking at the page, recognizing letters and placing them in the context of words. And my brain was processing those words. And yet, like, could I count this as reading? I don't know. I was reading this book and yet I was like, I am not taking anything in. It was the most fucked combination of like incredibly dense, too much exposition, incredibly like large moral conundrums and questions this book raises, which it doesn't answer. No questions are answered. And also like characters devoid of any personality. This book is like simultaneously so dense and full while also being truly empty. Like there's nothing here. This book truly, you could put a gun to my head and ask me what the character Xavier does in this book. Could not tell you. And I read this literally less than 12 hours ago. And I took notes. Like that's what I'm looking at over here. I took notes so I could remember and I'm still like, babe, what the fuck happened? Because I could not tell you. Hello. Now, let's be honest. I read a lot of questionable books on this channel. And one of my new favorite routines to do is draw a bath, kick back, relax, and treat myself with some Vance Global Delta 8 THC gummies. Vance Global sells CBD and THC products that are all completely legal and shipped to your door in discreet packaging. I personally am a gummy girl. I always have been. So I really have been kicking into these Delta 8 gummies and they are very good. I will say they're 400 milligrams per package or 50 milligrams per gummy. I and like take half. You know what I mean? Like I truly do like, you know that like SpongeBob like little bite? That's what I do with this and I have the night of my fucking life. They are also vegan, organic, and all of the lab testing information is available on their website. As I said before, they ship discreetly, but they also ship quickly to all 50 states, Canada, the UK, and Australia. Their Delta 8 carts are one milliliter and no additives or cutting agents for used period. Also it has a high quality ceramic coil, which means improved airflow and there's no block issues and it's also safer. Competitors use cheap alloy coils which can cause lead contamination. There's a wood mouthpiece which is naturally antibacterial and this is guaranteed to be the best Delta 8 cart and if you're not satisfied you can get your money back. Now if this seems like something you're interested in and I seriously recommend that you do kick back with the Kendall and Kylie book, use some of the Vance Global products and have the night of your life. Go to the link in my description below and use the code UNCARLY to get 20% off your order. Again, go to the link in my description below, use the code UNCARLY and get 20% off. Thank you Vance Global so much for sponsoring this video. I'm talking to Vance Global now. I love this product. Let's get back into the video. Okay. 
So let's go through what Rebels, City of Indra, is about. What happens in this book? What's the literary tale that the Jenner sisters are spinning? Let's break it down. So Rebels, City of Indra is a dystopian young adult novel written by Kylie Jenner and Kendall Jenner. 2014, very much the era where like Hunger Games was the itch girl. We all wanted to be her. I like grew up around this time, right? Like I was in middle school from like 2011 to 2013. I think that math makes sense <laughs> when Sorry, my neighbor is cutting down a tree right now. So if this video never comes to light, it's because I've been smushed. I grew up in this time-ish when we were being truly fed so well with YA fiction. Like as a young adult growing up in this time, banger after banger book being released, you know, all the Hunger Games books, read those babies, loved them. Maze Runner series, underrated bop, divergent, bad, but it was fun. So this kind of reads to me as Kris Jenner, saw the success of these dystopian novels or some publisher approached her and they were like, hey, we will get a ghostwriter. They will write a YA dystopian kind of romance girly book and we will slap the names of Kendall and Kylie on the cover and you'll collect your check and we'll collect our check. That's kind of the vibe that I, I can't allegedly, get me getting sued by Kris Jenner, but that's the energy that emanates off this book. Truly, I would be shocked. I will curb stop myself somehow if either Kendall or Kylie read a single chapter from this book. There's literally no way. I feel like they were like, wouldn't it be cool if it was about sisters and it was like dystopian and people cared about beauty? And then the ghostwriter was like, okay, I'll write the whole book. And then it came out. Like this is also coming out very much around the Kylie Jenner blue hair era, uh, Kylie lip kit moment. I just want you to know that. So when you're picturing this, you know that Kylie Jenner had blue hair. Let's get into the plot of the book. <laughs> and again, if this seems like it's not making sense, it's truly not my fault. Like I am looking at these notes. So this of course takes place in the city of Indra. Indra is a colony. It's quite small and the world is basically exploded because of global warming, which is so chic, so topical. Greta Thunberg collab with the Jenner sisters. The world has fucking collapsed because of global warming. So now people either live in the clouds, if you're rich, or you live at rock bottom, which is like underneath the fucking earth, basically. It's super subtle. So it's like, you know, divergent, dystopian, a, a future not far off where the government has control of the world and the wealth gap is large and it's steampunk, so everything's made of steel. And also everyone dresses like pirates. Like it's never said that everyone's dressing like pirates, but in my brain, they're wearing fucking pirate coats. Like that's what my brain's saying. If you were not really around and an active participant in the dystopian craze of the early 2010s, first of all, I'm so sorry, but the basic setup of a lot of these books is like, it's a city in the future, but this thing, there's like a thing that they have that's usually like a comment on a greater thing. The Hunger Games is like, it's a futuristic America, but the government sends kids to a yearly televised death match. And that's kind of like a comment on like war-ish, I think. <laughs> Almost like a metaphorical situation that represents like government control, a surveillance state, systematic inequality, things like that. So what is Rebel City of Indra's little thing? What sets her apart from the other girls so she can become America's next top model? So Indra is a not so far off distant future of America where, get this, women can only have one child it's insane. Every single woman in the city of Indra takes a special birth control pill that makes it so they can only have one child. Don't ask about the science on that. Don't ask. You don't want to know. This is insane for so many reasons. It feels like maybe Kylie or Kendall or the writer kind of heard about China's one child policy and was like, and that's what the fucking book's going to be about. Publishers like, right, so it's about China's one child policy and it's like, about the historic repercussions or what that means in a culture, what that says for gender politics and body autonomy. And they're like, absolutely not. It's just magical birth control pill and they get $1 million. <laughs> it's worth saying, that's kind of what I think to be Indra's fucking thing. There's like 900 other layers of world building that don't need to be there and are incredibly complex and none of them are ever addressed at all. Rebel City of Indra is like, okay, so there's a one child policy and the Kendall and Kylie self inserts get up to a little bit of romance. They don't address it. Like they just kind of present these ideas and are like, that's pretty smart, right? They bring up climate change because the entire fucking world has burned up except for the clouds where you can live or underground where you can live. It's not like exploring a 
post-apocalyptic global warming thing. You would think maybe they could connect like the overpopulation arc to the global warming arc, some kind of thing of like, there's too many people in the world so the government had to step in. No, no. No, they're just two separate things. Another thing that's happening, I know you're thinking like, there's not enough here. We need more. <laughs> the government's called the High Council, literally never addressed beyond this. And they put a chip in your brain. And when the chip's in your brain, they can take your memories out of your brain, put it in their archives, like a library, and you forget and you not give it back to you. It's never explained why the fuck they want your memories and what it means to like not remember things. Like it's not like the giver where it's like, I don't remember fucking color or emotion and what's this like? No, they're just like, and another thing. Yeah, there's a library of fucking memories. I like live for the chaos of it, honestly. Like it's really deeply hilarious to me. They do understand that a dystopian novel needs to challenge in some way, like a modern thing happening. They're like, okay, 1984. Fahrenheit 451, Hunger Games, like we know that we need some kind of societal event to represent something that's happening in the present day. So they take like overpopulation, climate crisis, body autonomy, surveillance state, government interference, all that shit, but they just like don't address it. Like it really barely affects the two main characters, which I will be calling basically steampunk Kendall and Kylie. It's a split narrative between Lex and Libya. Lex is like a loose Kylie self insert. Libya is a loose Kendall insert. I only know this because it says so on the Wikipedia page. I had to Google which one was supposed to be which. Because when I tell you these two characters are husks of people, I can't explain it more than that. Like they both kind of have the qualities of being beautiful, of being stubborn. They are literally the same. And it's crazy because it's like based on you, girly. So just like give the ghostwriter five personality traits, like you can do that. But like all these societal events rarely impact Lex and Livia, except for the fact that Lex lives in poverty. But it's so funny that it's like obviously written by two incredibly wealthy people who like don't really understand society outside of their bounds because it's like in what world would climate crisis, government interference, body autonomy not affect the poor sister? way more than the rich sister. <laughs> like, it's just like rich person being like, everything's equal. It's the American dream, baby. Lex slash Kylie is the poor sister. They're both orphans, by the way. She lives in Rock Bottom, which is like the underground kind of community. It's like on the ground, fuck, it's so stupid, where the poor people live. She wants to join their kind of version of the special op secret service spy thing to beat the rebels, I believe, which makes no sense because you would think the rebels would rebel against the government, but she doesn't want, she wants to beat the rebels. So think about that. And that's her whole thing. She wants to like overthrow the government that's fucked her over. Great. Livia is an heiress who lives in a fucking island on the clouds, a castle on the damn clouds, Les Mis core. She is also an orphan. They literally call her an heiress, like not like an heiress with an H, like heir, heiress. Pissed me off so much. <laughs> it made me so mad. And she's rich and she rides on her horse that she specifies is not white, but ivory. Awesome. And in the very beginning, you get basically all this info dump about the city of Indra from her riding on her horse. She's like riding on the horse and just offering you bare exposition of how the world works. Cause you know how people who are living in a dystopian society explain in their mental thought process, the inner workings of how society works. So actually in Canada, we're run by parliament. And we have a prime minister. Like, what the fuck? Her whole thing is that she's an heiress and she's being trained to basically be a debutante, go to her emergence ball and make her debut in high society. And she doesn't want to fucking do that because she just likes horses. Lex and Livia, pretty standard names, right? But then everyone else is named like Tutor Etiquette Walso. Literally, Livia's like fucking butler's name is Marius. And it's like, if you're gonna have a character live in a castle on the clouds like Les Mis, do not name her butler after <laughs> a character in Les Mis. That's where the sisters are. That's where you're meeting them. Livia is a rich heiress who doesn't want to go to her ball. Livia is training to be a kind of like special ops spy combatant soldier girl boss. And she wants to escape poverty. And these are very much kind of presented in this book as the same thing. Not wanting to make your debut in high society is the same thing as trying to escape poverty. And I'm happy that the Jenners are the ones telling that story. I am. Lex's best friend's name is Kane. He's one of the love interests in this novel. He goes missing. So Lex is like, great, I'm a fucking spy. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking find him. So she goes up to the cloud community, the iCloud. She finds Livia and she's like, I know you fucking know where Kane is, bitch. You need to fucking tell me. And Livia's like, no, for no reason. Like, girl, tell her. And then they go on this 
journey to find and free Kane. There's also a character named Xavier, not Xavier, Xavier, like caviar, and he's more like the bad boy. And he's the other love interest. And they just fall in love, basically. Like, these two girls go to find Cain. They're both orphans, and they find out that they have the same lime green symbol on their eyes. And they're like, whoa, I wonder if we're sisters. And they are. And their last name is fucking Cosmo. Lex and Livia Cosmo. It sounds like I'm making this book sound stupider. It sounds like I didn't read it because it's so fucking dumb. At the end of the book, they fucking find him, whatever. And also Lex gets her brain chip removed that steals her memories. So she can now be her true self. They go on this little journey. It's so truly devoid of any plot that I don't even feel the need to explain it to you. The only interesting thing is the truly ass world building and insane self insert characters and the attempt at like a discussion on class inequality from two of the richest women in the world. Because this book doesn't already have enough going on right now and we need more, there's also a big undercurrent of the wealthy people in this society being obsessed with beauty. So it's also a thinly veiled anti-plastic surgery stance, which like, don't tell me that. Like, I'm sorry, I think that plastic surgery as an ethical dilemma, as a feminist conversation is incredibly complex. I don't really feel like I have the brain capacity to discuss it in length right now, especially because this book literally melted my brain. But I do believe that if I'm going to have somebody lecture me on the detrimental effects of plastic surgery on society, it's not gonna be Kendall and Kylie Jenner. Babes, no. If you got your jaw shaved down, you no longer have the right to tell me I should love who I am and what I look like. If you get a brow lift, do not tell me to love myself. Like, I will snap. One of like Livia's like people in her like royal court who is training her to be a debutante goes and gets her wrinkles zapped off every year. There's like a throwaway line in this book that's like, anybody under 5'2 is deformed in this society. Also, in lieu of like making sure that this world actually makes sense and it feels like a real world, they also just kind of invent little slang words that people in Indra use. One is strato, which means cool or like good. Rebel City of Indra is not a strato strato book and they call swords zingers and everyone uses swords in this society i hate that i read this book so that's really it don't read this book don't read this book Just literally spend your time doing anything else you could spend four hours staring at a wall it would be a better experience for you thank you so much for watching my instagram my story graph where i track what i read my tiktok all of that stuff is in the description below i'll see you soon bye